Phytoplankton are the, the key energy source to all of the Antarctic food webs, but they also play an important role in regulating the climate of the planet. That might seem a little bit far-fetched, but by virtue of the, sh the sheer weight of numbers right across uh, all, of, all of the ocean, and the, in particular all of the Southern Ocean, they can control atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations. By, uh, by photosynthesis, they fix some of the carbon dioxide that's dissolved in, in the ocean. And then if the, the phytoplankton cells then sink down into the ocean's interior, never to return again to the surface, they've essentially captured that carbon. What then has to happen in the upper ocean is to restore the balance between carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the ocean. They have to then draw atmospheric carbon dioxide into the ocean. And in that way, they're acting as a carbon sink. And it's referred to as the biological pump. It's the way in which ocean biology then can help to regulate the uh, global climate. Phytoplankton are autotrophic microorganisms that inhibit the upper sunlight of almost all the ocean's body of fresh water on Earth. Phytoplankton and the Earth's climate are inextricably intertwined. These microorganisms use the light, carbon dioxide and nutrients to grow. Even though these microorganisms are tiny, they are within every ocean and consuming around half of the carbon dioxide emitted into the atmosphere. Even when they die, the carbon sinks into the ocean bottom and deposits their carbon where it can be trapped for a long period of time. The ocean's carbon balance is controlled biologically by tiny phytoplankton, called, co called coccolithophores. Around 50% of global photosynthesis takes place in the ocean. By these organisms drawing down on carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, it converts it into organic material which ultimately dissolves into the ocean floor. This process is called an organic carbon pump, which creates a sink into the ocean for carbon dioxide. Coccolithophores are known as stone makers, which are, no are major calcifiers in the ocean. These are also known as phytoplankton tiny algae. These produce calcium carbonate that may form a massive ocean bloom visible from space. Because of the calcium carbonate cells, the cells reflect light. These phytoplankton influence a global change by increasing the ocean's albedo. The coccolithophores bloom visible from space and reflect the visible sunlight in the area. By having less sunlight to absorb, it causes the ocean to have a cooling effect. The way these phytoplankton can regulate the ocean's temperature is by the claw theory, C-L-A-W, which is used by seeding clouds. Each letter represents the first letter of each of the creator's last names. These are Robert Charleston, James Lovestock, Marine Andre, and Stephen Warren. Coccolithophores and other phytoplankton can produce a sulfur compound which is known as dimethyl sulfide, also known as DMS. They use active cells called DMPS that regulate the osmotic pressure in the seawater. When the cells of the DMPS die, some of them convert into dimethyl sulfide, which then oxidizes the atmosphere to sulfur dioxide and sulfuric acid and eventually will form sulfur aerosols. These aerosols will then act as cloud concentration nuclei, CNN. The water droplets that make up these clouds can only form a non-gaseous particle which then causes the water to condense. These non-gaseous particles are CNN. The phytoplankton that are CNN act to increase the size and density of the clouds, increase the albedo of the earth, having a cool effect which is a negative feedback system. Phytoplankton produce more DMS when the sea temperature warms. So when the clouds are seeded, temperature cools down and less DMS are produced, which result in fewer clouds. The coccolithophores are also used to make elaborate shells to form calcium carbonate. As they die, these shells are buried within the ocean floor. Some of these shells form limestones, which is subducted into the layer of the earth. By doing this, it locks up the carbon for millions of years, which reduces the atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. As explained, some of the calcium carbonate is converted back into carbon dioxide, which then returns to the ocean's surface, which increases the atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. The process is called the calcium carbonate pump. The strength between both these processes, both the organic carbon pump and the calcium carbonate pump, determines the exchange of carbon dioxide between the ocean and the atmosphere, which explains how strong the bond is between the sink in the ocean and with the carbon dioxide. As oceanographers in Roger Reville, a climate scientist, grew concerned of the biological pump. This pump included being a net downflux of carbon. This regulates the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. 
As carbon dioxide is released and the delay process remains for long periods of the, in the ocean, it is because of the cold temperatures and high density of the water which stops it from mixing with the warmer water that remains above. As research, it takes up to hundreds of years for the ocean's currents to transport the dissolved gases and other nutrients back to the surface waters. With this carbon burial, it constantly removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and delays its return. As the air and sea have a gas exchange, it liberates between surface water carbon dioxide to atmospheric carbon dioxide in about a year. Once they dissolve in seawater, carbon dioxide gas reacts with the water to form a carbonic acid, which then it can separate by losing the hydrogen ions to form a basic bicarbonate and carbonate ions. The reactions are reversible and close to e equilibrium. By having the carbonate ions decreasing the concentration, it reduces the rate of calcification of the marine organisms, such as the reef building corals. If calcium carbonate dissolves, more carbon dioxide will be released, which may create a runway greenhouse effect. As the worldwide temperatures are predicted to rise over the next century, it is important to know that the reactions the phytoplankton are going to have. Scientists have shown that they are able to adapt to change in the temperatures. My opinion on if the marine plankton can continue to play a role in regulating the Earth's climate would be that they can, due to the many tests that have been done and proven that they can, not only within my research, but others as well.